Hip hop is urban the culture. Mouth music, what's the deal, baby? What's good, what's good, what's good, what's good? Appreciate you having me, you heard? I had to bring you out to the town, man. Chill out for a little bit. Yeah. What's going on, man? How's everything? How you been? You got me out in the Q borough, man. You know what I mean? Man, I'm saying, you know, man. Easy, man. Taking my life. Had to rep. Well, what better way to rep? Yeah, rep the you culture. You know what it is. You know? Going to J&J &J Boulevard, right? Run DMC joint. You know what I mean? That's it. That's it. Hip hop, you know what I mean? That's, That's it. it. The heart of it. Word. Tell, tell the people about you, man. Tell the people you down with the Monopoly family. I mean, you know, one part Monopoly. You know what I mean? Shout out John Jiggs, my brother. Nam Nitty, uh, Rockwell. Me, M dot O dot U dot F. Stands to move over, you finish. Um, you know, I got my own shit uh, popping to SDE, Stay Down Entertainment. You know what I mean? So, it's going, it's going, it's moving. We got a lot of shit going on out here. Got a lot of shows we doing. So, just stay tuned, man. A lot of good shit going on. Got a show coming up pretty soon. You was telling me out on the island. Yeah, we got a joint out on, um, on Nass and Merrick Boulevard, Merrick Boulevard, out on Nassau. Um, I don't know the full address, I get that though. Um, in Charlotte, uh, the 14th. Um, it's moving, man. That's it. What can you say, man? It's moving. Just tell, tell everybody about you, man. You from the island? Born man, and raised? Born in the Bronx. Raised uptown, Harlem. Moved back to the Bronx, moved back to Harlem. We moved out to Long Island, CI Central Islip. Home of Keith Murray, that little D and all that. Shout out to Keith Murray, a wild boy. Yeah, wild boy, man. Jesus. Um, I love him. <laughs> yeah, wild boy, man. Yo. You know what I mean? He opened the door. Like a lot of people respect him in the industry. Well, he put a lot of hands and feet on it. He's wilding out. <laughs> yep, yep. But, uh, you know, I hope he can get back on track with the music. Yeah. You know, I'd yeah. like to see that. I love to see that. You know what I mean? But CI, you know, some twice in Long Island, so that's what I represent. Um, just music, bro. Music, that's it. I mean, hip hop, bars, that's all we do over here inside. Bars, bar you to death. How, how long you been doing music? How long you been writing, rapping? I've been at it, I've been at it since, to say the truth, I wasn't even rapping. My brother was rapping first. And my brother was rapping and DJing. And when I lived in the Bronx, he used to make me, he used to lock me in his room and make me listen to him DJ. Word, but he used to lock me in his room after a while, he didn't have to lock me in anymore. No I just go in there. It was second nature, yeah, you know, and now you wanted to be there. And that's when DJing was DJing. I mean, that's when they had the Gemini turntables. You had to really be cutting and scratching. That's when they put the cordial on their joints so it don't... Hold the needle. Yeah, hold the needle, you know what I mean? Like, you put the cordial on there, don't touch that. <laughs> yeah, they don't know nothing about yeah. that now. Yeah, they don't know nothing about that now. You know what I mean? So. You think that's a lost art form, or you think it's still out there? You think people still spinning like that, or not? I think I think it's I think for the real DJs, the kid Capris and stuff like that, I think that's still there. I don't think it get as much light shined on it as it should have. Or should, because everybody's doing the uh what's those Serato's? Serato. It's all computerized now. Yeah, it's more of that. So it's not don't get that much light, but if it was a good taken back to that, a lot of these people that you call DJs couldn't do it, bro. Couldn't do it. It's a whole whole different ball game. So you DJ too? Nah, nah, I don't DJ. Okay. Nah, nah, I don't okay. DJ. Okay. I wish I did. I'd be. So your brother was on the ones and twos and you had the mic? Yo, that's a fact. I used to just sit there, watch him, watch him, and after a while, that's it, man. I started, I fell in love with hip hop, you know what I mean? And I, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really start rapping, rapping, until I moved to Long Island. Hmm. You know what I mean? I got with a so couple what of- What age people. is this now we talking? Uh, Everybody says it's between normal. The, the, the primary answer I get is between like 12 and 15, where everybody get into it. They start doing their thing, start rapping, start taking it seriously, start writing. It had to be 16. Okay. Probably 15. 15, 16, yeah. No, I'm lying. Yeah, like 15, 16, yeah. 15, 16. And do you remember back at 16 who was holding it down? Who was the artist at that time? My favorite art artist? Who was the man back then? My favorite, my favorite artist that I, I ain't gonna be like, I even try to rhyme like them, Das Effects. Mm, okay. I used to even try to rhyme like them, Niggity Eek, you know, that crazy shit. <laughs> okay. I think my first rhyme, my first rhyme, I think was that. He rhyming like that, yeah. Rhyming like that, but after that, I kind of bounced around, but I found my own style. My favorite artist now, well, always been since, since after Das Effects, is always Redman. Mm. That man is that guy, man. That boy, he, lyrical. Yeah, hit between 
Redman. Funk Doc. Redman and Jada Kiss, them two. Them two right there, like I could listen to them two all day. Jada Kiss, yeah. Them Jada. two right there, you, any one of them, just put that on that snow for Do me. Do they have a song together? Nah. Okay. That's what's so crazy. They never did a song together. Mm. Not that I know of, because I've okay. been dying for that. That 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 when you when you said the two of them, I was like, damn, that would be yeah. kind of kind of funky. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a two I could listen to all day. You know what I mean? Okay. So now you you got music out. You doing projects? Yeah. What's, what, how many projects you got out on the way? What's happening? Yeah, man, I got yo. It's funny you said that. Me and my man were just talking about how much music I got out. And if I go back from when I started, like I got bro, project wise myself. It's not even through what I'm featured on or featured with my group. I probably got about, if I, if I go deep into my catalog, probably about 10 projects of myself. Mm. You know what I mean? And Dating that's, back how far? Like 2000. I'm going to say 2000, and not 2000. And the only reason it's only 10 is because I had to do a stretch. You know okay. what I mean? I did a four year, I did a four year stretch. Did a one year stretch, came on, and did a four year stretch. Mm. So if I wouldn't have been did them, did them two stretches, things would have been different. I would have probably, I would have probably been out of there. You mm. know what I mean? But that's what it is. You know what I mean? so, can't change the past. Can't change the past, bro. Mm -hmm. So, that's so how it goes. What, what's, what's current now? What, what project is currently out? Uh, Daybreakers. 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 It's on all streaming platforms, um, everything. Bandcamp, all streaming platforms. Distro kid, everything. Distro, anything you punch up, you punch in uh, m dot o dot u dot f. Daybreakers, all the capital letters, it'll come right up. Did you used to uh, sell CDs back in the day? Hell yeah, I missed that. Uh, okay. Right out the trunk. Baby. That's that's what I always ask people. Right like, out the how trunk. Do, how do you think you know we can bring that back? That bring bring the, the physical currency, bring you know, put it all together. Like, yo, to be honest, it's. But you got to think, cars don't even got CD players no more. Which is why I told somebody the other day, flash drives. Couldn't plug them shits right in. Plug Take it right off. in, flash that's drive. A that's a, that's I, that's I a think fact. I think that's the new the new way. You know, I, yo, I, I'm not gonna lie. My man was doing that too. I'm like, yo, bro, what you doing? That shit ain't gonna work. But he was doing it. I don't know why he stopped. And the flash drive, you yeah. can throw your videos on there, make make it more of a, a sale. You know, bro, you can sell a whole hand to hand like boom. Just like them CDs, man. I miss that shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Out the trunk. Yo, we used to, man, we used to get thousands, two thousand CDs. We used to come out here to ads and make an ad. Five out, five out, five out. Everywhere, five out. Greek fest. Five out, five out. Niggas getting busy, niggas getting to it. You know what I mean? That was a CD. It was taken. What, what do you think about where we are now musically? It sucks. <laughs> I, I, get, I get different answers. Nah, Some people see. say, you know, it's it's alright. Nah, let me let me let me say this. I ain't, I'm, 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 joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't think it sucks. I just feel like if you're independent, it's more work, which is good. Right now, it's better for the independent artists. Don't shoot for the label because the label is jerking you. Like they have been. I'm gonna even keep it more official. Don't even stream your shit if you ain't getting the million to two million streams. Stream, uh, one stream is 0 0.0003 of a penny. So how the hell, you, how many streams you gotta see to make See, you did? And this is fast, you could Google this. A stream ain't shit. You get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 streams, you probably only get about $200, $10, dollars shit like that. So the streaming is just the record label revamp raping you. So what you thing, think is the best avenue? The best way for independent artists is, how they say that shit? Straight to the consumer, oh, I said. I don't Direct know to consumer. Shit. Direct to consumer. Yeah. Get your build, get your own website. Get your own website. Have people go there. Buy your shit. Buy your, your CDs, your merch, everything off your website. Is that what you're doing? That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm in the midst of doing now. Okay, building the site. Yeah, building the okay. site because streaming. Direct manual, downloads. I look. I look. I also look at it like this, man. People. People are dropping. This is this is this is just, again. This is just for me. I'm not gonna keep on our album, album, album. I'm not doing that no more until it's wanted. Meaning that for the few, for the albums that I have dropped, there's songs on there that I still think about that I feel like I wasted. Like they didn't get the proper push or the proper promotion behind it. It could have been a big song. I feel like you dropped a project, 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 project. It's not getting heard. This is.
this is the era to me, once again, for me, this is the era of the single. Meaning, if you're not a Beyonce, Drake, Eminem, somebody like that, already established, Wayne, established, why are you dropping albums for? For what? For wasting your music. Get you, a, get you a single that's crazy, that you feel is crazy, put your bread behind that single and take off. So, so it's more single driven now, you think? I, that's what I was interviewing a brother the other day, and that's the same thing he said. He said that the game is single driven now. To put See, out a project don't make sense. It's asinine, bro. It's very ass. Think about it. How he many, said even the EP, he said he, he ain't even gonna waste time doing. It makes no sense, bro. You gotta think about it. You buy, say, you buy, say you buy your beats, because you want the beats for yourself. So say you buy them, even if you lease them, whatever. Get the beat, that's money. Studio time, that's money. Mix and master, man, that's money. Now you shoot a video, that's money. All that stuff is money. For what? To put it on a streaming site? Say you get, say you get 100, 20 streams. All the money you just spent for that song, you ain't getting about a dollar, what you getting back for it? You know what I'm saying? So, why not make a one song that you know you can put all your money into, push it where it belongs to be pushed, instead of putting all that money into an album that you're not gonna really get. Who you know really got an album right now besides the megastars? You know what I mean? Listen to the artists that's on the radio now. You don't hear them really with no albums. They make yeah. a little hit here and there. Everybody got a single every every couple months. That's it, or a feature. Up. Well, Mano haven't had an album when? When last time Mano had an album? He's hot. Did he, did he do an album a couple months back, no? How long ago? Look, you ain't even look. Look yeah. what I'm saying. Couple and he's, ago, yeah. you know, Mano's that, that guy. You know what I mean? Everybody love Mano. He ain't dropping no albums like that. Come on, bro. A lot of people ain't dropping no albums like that. Bad underground artists, if you get an underground artist, some of them are dropping albums, but they're doing it direct to consumer, like boom. There you go. You know what I mean? So so what's the what's the formula then? A single every how often? I would say a single. I would say a single is uh I would say when you hot and you drop a single, drop another. Follow up. Follow up. Follow up. Yeah, follow up. I would say do that shit until you're until people are calling for an album. I don't remember yo, I'm from I'm gonna keep it a rap. I'm from the era where you had to drop a hot mixtape before you drop an album. Absolutely. That's the era I'm from. Absolutely. If your mixtape wasn't popping, niggas wasn't checking for you. That's the era I'm from. You had to have a crazy mixtape before you drop an album. But now people are like, I ain't dropping no mixtape, that's giving away music. Because the game has changed. You know what I mean? Before we drop mixtape, you get Jamaica Ave or you hit the mom and pop stores, get that mixtape out there, niggas wasn't. You ride away, oh, niggas is knocking my shit, all right. Now, okay, niggas know who I am, niggas knocking my shit, boom, they go to the album. And that's how, that's how it used to be, it ain't like that anymore. So you say singles and features is the best way to best way, bro. get it jumping. I mean, look at uh, look at the boy Gorilla Nims. Mm -hmm. Nice. He got an album, right? Yeah. I, I I haven't seen one, but he's featured everywhere, and he's on fire. The book and cost bread. <laughs> the book, he got his own store in Brooklyn. He got his podcast. He got his podcast. Yo, I don't hear no. I haven't heard no album from him, and he's he's on fire right now. That's what I'm saying. You ever work with him? Ever meet him? I met him one time up in uh, he was at Mohegan Sun, Connecticut. I met him up there, I saw him up there, chocolate with like maybe like five, ten minutes, that's it. Man, crazy. But even the, um, what's the, what's the other boy? Uh, RJ Payne, monster. Mm -hmm. It's a beast, bro, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Beast. He put out, he got his butt, he just started doing the streaming show. I mean, he just started it because he just been catching fire. He got so many projects, now, now he should go before, he was going straight to his website. Mm -hmm. He's bread. So you, you plan on shooting videos? Every time you drop a single, you shoot a video behind it too? I would say if, if, if the song is getting traction, yeah. I would say if the song is getting traction, yeah, because everything is mostly visual now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything, everybody want to see, 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 see. And social media presence, and how do you feel about that, where your social media presence kind of dictates your Everything. Yes. Let's say everything. Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> um, I feel it's good and bad. I don't go. I don't feel it's good and bad because a lot of these shows, people, it's crazy that 
you can buy numbers. You know, everybody know that trick now. You can buy your numbers. But it makes it look good for people who don't know that. Everybody should know that now. But it sucks when, a, or someone, then when someone books you and you got 30,000, 40,000 followers and you get booked, five people come to you. So it doesn't add up. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't add up. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's why I said it's good. It's good and bad. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a facade. Oh, that's a fact. You know? That's a fact. That's a good fact. I'd rather have 500 followers and have 250 people yeah. come out and see me than, you know, a million and. Bro, that's the type of shit I'm on. I mean, I'd rather have four or five followers and have a good two hundred people come out and see me. I'm not gonna fuck with fake people with these numbers and oh, I got a million followers, the fake blue Box check and all and that. Shit. I'm not doing that dumb ass shit, bro. You get booked, five people there. You know what I mean? Nah. That ain't the type of time I'm on. What do you think the game is missing right now? Originality. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mainstream, uh, as, far, as far as main, if you hit that underground circuit, it's a lot of original niggas. Like, it's a lot of good music. But if you talk a mainstream, originality. There's no originality. Whoever's hot, everybody want to sound like that. Why do you think... I asked somebody this in one of my interviews. Do you think it's the, the program director's fault? Because yes, they dictate what gets played, so everybody wants their stuff to sound like what's getting played. How can we change that? How can we sway the program directors? Get them out of it. Get them out of it. But you see, it, it's, it's hard, all right. It's hard to do that when, say you got a kid from the projects. He don't know, he know how to rap or whatever. He sounds like this, he sounds like that. You give a kid from the projects, I don't know nothing, 22, 23 years old. You give him two, three million dollars. You know what I mean? What do you think that kid's gonna do? He never saw that type of money in his life. He's That's running. the potential for danger. Yeah, but he never saw, he's not thinking about nothing, but hold on. He's not even knowing that you just signed your life away. You also in hella debt because they want that back ASAP. But the only thing that's on that young kid's mind is at 22, 23, yo, this is $2 million. I can eat my family out of here and I can do what I want. Let me take it and deal with the consequences later. That's it. Let me buy this big car. Let me show, let me front on, let me get this chain. Let me do this. Let me get this house. I show niggas in the hood. I don't need them shit on these bitches that shit on me. Ha ha. The labels prey on that. So now what they do is they take that kid, since he sound like a whoever's hot, gonna give him this, give him that, sound like this, keep sounding like that. Get a whole bunch of kids that keep doing that. But at, at how many points is sent per, per stream, how are they even, is it even lucrative for them to be dealing with this? It's like, not stream. I mean, where, where are they getting the money from? Like what, what are they getting, you the know? The labels? Yeah. I mean, from what I've seen and from what the stuff that I've read. Because, I mean, just feel me that at 0.2 cents a stream, if you got to think that there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about this, you know, yeah. whether it's the licensing or something they're selling or. But this is the thing since the stream is 0 0.0003 of a penny, when these kids sign these deals, they're not understanding what they're signing. They're signing everything. The label's getting a part of everything mm -hmm. your merch your show, your toys, everything. So these kids don't know that. They just see advance of two million. So now here's, here's the question. They're giving you the opportunity to be able to advance your skill set and you know gain popularity. Do you think that that's being jerked or do you think that's an opportunity? And for the opportunity, you gotta you know give up something. I would say as, a, as the mentality of a 22, 23 year old, they're not thinking like that. And I, me and my man was talking about this, me and my bro. I said, well, we was at that age, 22, 23. Nigga, we running around wilding. You would have gave us a million, two million dollars. We would have been like, fuck everybody. Nigga, we 22, 23, got a million, nigga, we doing whatever we want. I don't care what, sign what. I'm not reading shit, sign what. But let's sign it. You got to think. Where's the money? Where's the money at? You're telling me you're going to give me one for me just rapping and what I love to do anyway, and I'm getting out of all this? I don't care what that paper said. Yeah. That's the mind of a young kid. So that's why these labels do that. It's an opportunity if the young kid is, a, is if mindset is, yo, you know what? Let me take this opportunity to advance. Why these young kids ain't thinking that. They're thinking, listen, I need that foreign. You know what I mean? I need that foreign to slide through the hood and show niggas get out, up. To get out this crib, get yeah. out this crib. Let me go get me a house, get my family up out of here. Let me get this jewelry, let me get this watch. I can 
floor so ah, 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 ah. That's the mentality. You get the kids with a different mentality if they listen to some of the old times, which a lot of these kids ain't doing. That, that's another thing. How can we get the, the OGs, the vets, to pay more attention to the youth? And how can we get the, you know, vice versa, the youth to invest in listening to the OGs who got the knowledge and, you know, know what's going on? That right there, that, that, that's hard to do. And I'm gonna say because you gotta think, all right, me being a little older, at 22, 23, I wasn't trying to hear shit. You couldn't, you couldn't tell me nothing, but on the flip side of that, I always, I did what I wanted to do, but I listened to a lot of the older people. You know what I mean? I did what I wanted to do, but I listened. And I took some of it, I took some of it, not all of it. But you got a lot of kids now that don't, they look at a, a somebody that's 40 something, 50 something, 60, fuck out my face, you washed up. Not knowing, young, young boy, I've been there. I'm trying to show you that though. Exactly where you standing, baby. I've was been there. right there. If you stay like this, nigga, you, you're gonna be somewhere you don't wanna be. You know what I mean? So if we get some young kids, more younger than kids to listen, you know the ball game, right? Do you think that that's part of the plan is to separate the generations so the information yeah, doesn't trickle down? Yeah, it is. They don't want, they don't want, a lot of the older rappers now, Big Daddy Kane's and all this Carol Trump, they know the game. So what these record labels do is get these young kids and, and, and separate them like, nah, I don't listen to them. Here, take his money, shut up, here. They're not listening to them so they can tell them, yo, young boy, listen, nah, that money come with a whole bunch of bullshit mm. that you ain't even ready for. Let me, let me show you, let me talk to you, let me show you. You know what I mean? They don't want to listen to that. That's what's happening. If it's a way that if it's a way that they can get to them and talk to them, it's gonna be a different ball game. But these labels are blinding them with money, so these kids ain't listening. That's why if you notice when a, when a, when a person gets a certain age, these record labels ain't signing them. If you wasn't signed at a certain age, they're not signing you over 30 I'm, something. I'm glad you brought that up. Do you feel rap is a young man's sport? Nah. Rap is anybody's sport. That's how I feel. And it's, it's messed up because they, we're the only genre that put a cap on our shit. Country music, them niggas be like 70 years old coming out on wheelchairs, bro. Selling out arenas, 10, 20, 30,000 people. Nobody saying nothing. They're packed, you know what I mean? Every, uh, R&B, everybody, but I will, we're the only one that put a cap on our shit. Like, oh, you dirty, you can't ride no more. Or you this, why? I'm alive, I'm on the side of the grass. You know what I mean? Do you think that a, a rapper that's a little bit older can appeal to the younger kids? And... Nah, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I would say that it's always, it's always a lesson to be learned no matter what age, younger or older. It's always a lesson to be learned. Is this on how you deliver the message? I would say that. But you also, but you also gotta flip it and understand that there's a lot of these older dudes, man, that's stuck in their ways that's not showing these kids the right way. You know what I mean? Like, they showing them how to, yeah, here, do this, go do this, ah, go cut, go shoot this. Nah, bro. You know what I mean? You got some older niggas calling young niggas OGs. Like, that's my OG, like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, like, we, bro, like, how old are you? Like, you've been through so much, yo. I'm, yo, real talk, I'm, 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 I did my bed, bro. Did my fat bed for four years. I went in there, I was 32. There was a dude in there, bro. This dude was like 44, 45. Bro, the nigga decided to come to jail at 44, 45 and blood in. And I, you know, I, I you know what I mean? protection. Yo, and it, no, this was crazy. And I, like, I got love, yo, I fuck with blood, I fuck with Crips, you know what I mean? I fuck with, I fuck with both, you know what I mean? I ain't, I'm neutral, you know what I mean? I fuck with both, so I ain't got nothing against none of them. What I'm saying is the mentality, I'm, I'm looking at the mentality. I'm like, yo, and they sending them, sending bro on missions. What's up, brother? How, how you? How can we? Okay. All right. Talk nah, we man. good though. We good though. Thank you. <laughs> we doing an interview, not not a not a music video. Oh yeah, it's an interview, not a music video. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's another. Another thing that, you know, why I started shooting, I took it back to the, the murals and mm -hmm. took it back to the arts. 
I appreciate for him and coming and saying, you know, I'll bring yeah. the cars out, but yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's you know, like that's not what it's about. The nice cars and you know, that's that's. But you that's know. what everybody for the masses. I'm not gonna say everybody. Let me just say the masses. This is what the masses see. So that when you, this when these labels catch these young boys, they're like, yo, give you a nice car. Give you a nice car. You want, you want that Rory there? We're talking about. You want that Lambo? Here you go. That let me give me truck. Here you go. I know him, bro. They can't do that to someone that's older that know the game. So when that's older, like, nah, we're not doing no 316 deals and all that crazy. Nah, you ain't getting half my tour money, half this feature. Nah. So so what if you had the opportunity to do a 360 deal for a year and then you're a free artist? You don't think it's worth it to be able to get the help, get the traction? If it was for a year right now, right now for a year, and it gotta be, it gotta be super stipulations, like if it's just a year. I would do it for a year. That's it. That's it. No more. No more. No. I, they say two years, you say no. No, nah, not doing it. No. If you do it for a year so I get my traction up and get my shit up real quick, but the years, year nowadays are like that. Mm. So I could, yeah, you give me a year? Let's do it. But after that, no. Nah. If I'm gonna get everything that I need out that year, meaning that I'm gonna get my promotion, I'm gonna get my everything I need to get to get me to the next step, I do it. But I ain't doing no two, three, four, five. Nope. Ain't gonna be like, oh, these people, nothing. You get, nope, not doing it. <laughs> what do you think you bring into the game that's missing? Originality, baby. That's it, you know what I mean? I, yo, I remember when people got to think. I remember Wu Tang came out. It was eight of them, 10 of them, eight of them. Mm -hmm. Bro, nobody sounded like. Yeah. You could tell who's who. Oh, that's risen. And that used to be standard in rap. That you that, couldn't sound like the next motherfucker. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying right there. That's why right now rap is, is not where it's supposed to be. This is what I, I feel. Back in the day when you had the scenario, you be like, "Oh, that's Q-Tip. Oh, that's Fife. Oh, that's Buster. Oh, that's Charlie. Oh, that's Dinko." Now you don't know who's who. It's hard. It's hard to differentiate. Right. Matter of fact, I saw you posted something the other day. You was in the studio with, uh, with Dinko. With Dinko. Yeah, I did a joint with him. Me, him, and Jigs did a joint. Okay. Yeah, what's up? Him. What's up with Dinko? Where he been, man? He's chilling, man. I ain't doing him. On the island. Yeah, you know. He's doing him, man. He's doing him. We're gonna shoot a little slight video for that shit too. We'll do a little. It's a little. That's us going in sixteens. I mean, they going in spitting. Oh shit. Oh yeah, we gonna. Shoot. What's the name of the song? Uh, it's called Snap. And that's gonna be one of the singles you're gonna get behind. Nah, that's just that's, that's just a joint we did. Okay. That's what I put. I'm about to put out a mixtape. Mixtape. I'm the mixtape I'm about to do. It's just me putting out a mixtape. All right, so you say you're about to do a mixtape. Yeah. How do you plan on profiting from the mixtape? Or do you plan to profit? Or is it for the streets? Or? All right, my mi now the mixtape I'm doing is just to, like I said, I got my label, my SDE shit. That mixtape is to introduce the artist. to my SD shit. Okay. SDE shit. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I don't really plan to put no, when, I wanna, when I'm going to put money behind, behind me and my label all the way, that's when I'm going to probably do a crazy single. And be like, oh, boom. But this mixtape is going to be, let's yeah, so introduce the world to my, besides I'm one part Monopoly, I want to introduce y'all to this thing. You know what I mean? Hmm. Okay. Wow. And how soon does that come? That's for the winter or what's, what's going on? Winter. 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 And then uh, I'm going to let that flow out through the winter. How many um, songs are we talking about? Right now, I got, right now, so about, I think it's about 10, 11 joints on there. I'll okay. probably do about 12, 13 joints on there. So that's an album. Yeah, well, I wouldn't call it an album, because I'm not really. It's not full song. I'm not putting, yeah, I'm not putting it like an album. It's not like wild song, the song, concept. It's not even like, it's not even like, you know, most, well, most albums have concepts. I mean, it's not that. It's just, I'm introducing you to niggas that still around me. I can still spit. Now my album, if I put the, when I do when I do put an album out, I'm not putting an album out. I'm gonna put a single off it and push it. It's called Lil Heen. That's coming out next year. And I got I, I'm battling between one or two singles. I'm gonna push the single until the album is wanted. You know what I mean? Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Create the buzz. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see how this SDE mixtape do. That's that's. I'm gonna put that on Bandcamp. Let people buy that for like seven eight dollars. You know what I mean? Put on Bandcamp to my to my site is fully up. Then they can come to my site and buy it. And it's all me. And what about merch? I know y'all got the Monopoly merch. You got yeah. SDE merch. Yeah, definitely. Got all that. Got 
and all that shit. That's why everything's going on there. Tell us about now the uh, Monopoly family. Oh, How did you meet everybody? Jigs put that together. Okay. Jigs and Rock, we used to always run into each other doing uh, uh doing um shows. So one day we had a show, we had a show on the island. Jigs do a contest, and I came in second place in the contest. And this kid from Wanda, I forgot his name, came in first place, but everybody there was like, yo, how the fuck did he come in first place? They was mad that I didn't come in first place. They was like, yo, how does Finger Mouth come in first place? They were like, no, fuck. This is like, I knew Jig, but I didn't know him like that. We just always bump to each other. So maybe a month or two later, a month or two later, he, um, he hit me and was like, yo, I want to start this thing on Long Island called Monopoly Fam. It's a whole bunch of Long Island. I was going to attack the game like Wu-Tang. Mind you, when they started, it was supposed to be like 10, 11 of us. All Long Island artists, but no egos and all that. A couple of people so, fell off and just the four of y'all. Nah, it was only three of us. Oh, okay. It was only me, Rock, and Jigs. We were when I was running around doing shit, doing shit, doing shows, all, all this. Nam came about because Nam was always running around. We always bumping into Run each other's shows. Yeah, so it just happened Nam make beats. He's like, yo, Jigs like, yo, let's add Nam to the group. We got beats, any spit, go in. Let's have them. And he's like, all right, let's have them. That's how it became. But Jig started that shit. So Monopoly family's been formed for what now? How long? Damn. It started since it was three of us, like 2018. 17? No, 17. Oh, shit. 17. Nah, hold on. I always say that's what's missing to the groups. It started at 17, it was 17 or 18. That's when it started. And we just full flesh. Then Nam came aboard probably about two years now. About two years, I think. I'm gonna say about two years. Okay. Yeah, two years. Yeah. And now he does all the production, most of the production. He does a lot of production, not all of it. He does a lot okay. of production. But yeah, he does uh So for your mixtape he does some of the product, some of the production? He did uh I think he did two joints on there, two or one. Any features on this mixtape you got coming? Yeah, uh, I got Danko. Danko. I got my I got my bro Jigs. Uh, I got my man Fame. Um, yeah, I'm doing a blank. That's crazy. <laughs> so again, this is separate from Monopoly Family. Yeah, this, this is, is not a SDE Monopoly. project. Yeah, it's my SDE. I got they on there though. Anam's on there. Jigs on there. Rock's on there. Fame's on there. Dinkles on there. Uh, my brother Mid, El Mid, he's on there. Um, yeah, that's separate from what I'm doing. Monopoly Family. Okay. That's separate. We both we both we dropped the album real soon though. I mean, I, I, I don't rather, I tell niggas that I'd rather, I'd rather drop a single, but we're going to go with an album. I'm like, album, yeah. album. But, but see, this is the thing, we got a Monopoly website. Okay, so and everything's going to flow through the site. You can go to the website and get that, so that's on the ball game. So now, the Monopoly website, does Jigs fall under that and yeah. Rock, or? All of us. Everybody falls yeah. under that, Monopoly, so everybody's yeah. single projects will yeah. be under there? And, Everything okay. right there. Okay. I mean, so okay. we are, you go to that site, Monopoly Family site. Uh, replace the O's with X's, so M X M X P X L O. We do that. All our stuff is there. Each artist. I was at the show. The show in uh, Jersey. I had came out, man. Y'all yeah. did y'all thing, man. We tear stage up, man. Yeah, for sure. We tear sure. stage up, man. You get us on that stage. It's, it's different to be on that stage, but a lot of energy. Yeah, we tear stage up. Man. I always ask people this, what do you tell somebody that don't know about you to make them get into your music? Make them buy a single, make them log on and click on you? Uh, when it comes to me, I would say the wittiness, the punchlines. The wittiness, the punchlines, and the reality I give you my music. Most of my music, 
feel like you walk. I make you feel like you're walking right next to me. Either you, um, you feel like you're walking right next to me, or you've been through that, or you know somebody that went through it. But you can relate to it. Like, oh shit, I went through that. Like, my man went through it. I give you that every every time. If I give you something, a project, that's what you're gonna get out of it. I mean, if me just spitting, rhyming, I'm gonna give you wittiness and, and, and shit. You're like, oh shit, you know what you just said? I mean, a lot of that is missing the rap too. Yes, I agree with you. A lot of that. I agree with you. I remember I, I, li I like the days when you put on the album and be like, yo, hold on, why not? You remember what he just said? Ain't none of that no more. Yeah, I can't. I was just about to say, I can't think of the last time I, I hit rewind and was like, yo, bring that back. What, did, what, what, what happened right there? <laughs> See, it's missing. It's missing. You know what I mean? It's missing. So how, how do we get it back, man? How do we get that, you know, that feeling back, man? I always ask everybody that, like. You got it. I, I, how do we turn it around? We we all agree that it's kind of going off course. How do we turn it around? I would say people got to stop. I would say the rappers now, artists, and the new coming artists, man, be yourself. Stop following. Stop trying to sound like, like whatever the drill music is out now. Don't sound like that. Sound like you. You know what I mean? Sound, when the South came out, everybody's trying to sound like the South. When this came out, everybody's trying to sound like this. Stop trying to sound like something. Be you. That's it. Like the simple shit. Be you. And that's a problem. A lot of people they can't be themselves. They scared to be themselves. Well, well, yeah, I was about to say. What do you think it is? Like, I don't know. To be honest, like, I don't know. Like they think maybe they're not good enough. I don't know. <laughs> like, be you, man. Like, you'd be surprised how far you get. You. I mean, you'd be surprised how far you get you, bro. Like, you don't want to do that no more. I don't say that, man. I don't get that, but I'm not, I, this is me, I don't, I don't like <laughs> Bro. Got, got a couple bars for me, a little something to, you know. He called me on guard. A little like. something to excite the, excite the people, you know. I know you got some bars, man. I be seeing you on the, on the, on the freestyle, on the live, and all of that, on the, the when, post. When I come through, shit is disturbing. I'll cater nigga down like I'm wearing a turban. Working. I'm talking really on my grind. Your whole circle get an L like a Lexus sign. Stupid. Clip empty. I promise to put it in there. Everything real estate. Holla at Lydia. Miss Phoebe is telling you she a genius. We both Aquarius. Just imagine if we teamed it. Sensational. Mouth of irreplaceable. Like G Money running the car to your incapable. They don't make them like me no more. And these bitches is full of games like a casino floor. Fuck them. Nah. I'm <laughs> Nah, that's it, man. I can't. You call me off guard out here, nigga. <laughs> Yo. Uh, you being modest, man. I think you got it. I think oh, you got man. a few tucks. I, I got I mean, you. Everybody, the camera come on, and everybody get a little little camera shy, and you know. Well, I'm just trying to, you know what I mean? <laughs> MCs, oh, you going to make me rhyme? You got me rhyming out here? Nah, I don't, I, you know, I don't give a fuck about rhyming. <laughs> I, I don't care about that shit. I just, I was, my mind was somewhere else, so I'm like, I'm just coming for an interview. Don't you know, man? Let me see, let me see if I got something on cap. Uh, I ain't got nothing on cap right now, man. I ain't got nothing on cap, man. I'm fucked up. You got me. I'm stumped. <laughs> I ain't got nothing on cap right now. Man. Anything you want to leave the people with about what you got going on, about Stay Down, about Monopoly? Um. I look, I, I say this, man, just look out for our projects. Look out for Monopoly Candy projects. Look out for Mouth Project, M.O.U.F. Look out for the John J. Blue Project, the Look for Nine Middies Project. Look for uh, Rockwell Project. He just dropped, uh, I think, LL New J Part 2. Um, my, my, my shit, SDE, Stay Down Entertainment. Look out for a project, Mixtape coming out with that and more from that. Um, that being said, man, I just tell I tell y'all like this, man. Stay original, man. Stay original, man. Keep your originality. Don't sound like nobody. That ain't gonna get you nowhere too far. That shit only gonna last long, even if it do last at all. Let's get to what you do, man. Stay focused. Stay on your grind, and that's it. Patience and time. That's it. Hip hop preserving the culture. Mouth music. Appreciate you, family. Thank you for your time. Already. Always a pleasure. Already. Mm. Ready, sir. Whoa.
chilly out this morning. It's like, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs>